Hello, this is Greg Holsklaff for Revival Valley today. We continue our series on spiritual gifts by coming to the gift of healing. As all the spiritual gifts, we just want to really notice and encourage all the gifts because God wants to express himself through us. And at times of old, God the Father in the Old Testament, he healed through his prophets. And we see Jesus, he healed in his ministry. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all God, and they all represent the immutable characteristics of who He is. And so the Holy Spirit still is a, he is a healing God active in this world, active in the church, and active through us through the gift of healing. In the description, there's going to be more resources for you linked, so check those out if you want to know more about the gift of healing. But we're just going to spend a few moments talking about the spiritual gift of healing and what it should look like in the church and how we can have permission to continue to pursue this gift at all times. So th this gift is shown in a few places, 1 Corinthians 12, 9, and then it's also listed again in verse 28 and 30. It's a gift that is given by the Holy Spirit. It's manifested by the Holy Spirit for the common good. Like all spiritual gifts, the gift of healing is for common good. And the Greek word there really means to heal, to cure, or to make whole. And so God uses us through the Holy Spirit as a conduit for his supernatural healing without the human aid. Now, we bless doctors and we know that the human body was designed and created by God to, to heal. And doctors at times can provide medicine that helps us heal. But the gift of healing isn't the skill of medicine. The gift of healing is the supernatural gifting by the Holy Spirit that he performs healing work through somebody as they pray connected to the Holy Spirit. And it is a conduit of the love and grace of a healing miracle power. And that's really the gift of healing. Jesus commanded all of us to heal. He said, go heal the sick, drive out demons, and preach the gospel. He said that to his disciples. And then all of the commands to the disciples were given to us through the Great Commission when he says, teach them all I've taught you. And so we, there's a common expectation that all of us should be seeking and praying for people to be made whole through healing. But some people have a gift of the Spirit deposited in them so that the healing power of God regularly occurs in their life. And that's really what the gift of healing is. If you don't have the gift of healing, we should still be praying for the sick just as much as we should be taking care of the poor. But those with the spiritual gift of healing, it's just really heightened. And we should look for those people and, and, and offer them opportunities to pray for people in small groups, pray for opportunities in our worship gatherings. And there's a common phrase called the healing evangelist. And many times healing precedes presentation of the gospel. And many times Jesus said we should proclaim the gospel and we should demonstrate the gospel. And healing many times demonstrates the loving power of the Most High God who came and sent His Son to die for them, but it's a powerful gospel also. It redeems us, but it's also powerful. And so many times the gift of healing is an expression of that healing grace, of that powerful grace to enter into somebody's life, and it opens a door for the gospel to go forth. And so it's really important, like all the gifts, if you've been watching these videos, I say really important about every single gift, because Paul said in 1 Corinthians that all of them are important, all of them are for the common good, and we need to honor all of the gifts. And so in that sense, all of them really are important. So a personal story in my life of somebody who had the gift of healing. My dad, when I was in college, was dying of a, of a kidney failure. And he was, uh, it was a little bit mysterious. We didn't quite know what was going on. And my mom gave us, she said, you know, just always be close to the phone. We don't know if he's going to make it. And you're just, if I call you and tell you to go to the hospital, you need to go to the hospital. So it was very, very touch and go. And one of the old friends that my parents met in college heard about what my dad was going through. And so he organized a prayer call and he had the gift of healing. And so he, he organized this prayer call and they prayed for my dad over the phone. And so this is really where, where God can work over distances. You don't need to be present with somebody as you pray, believe in faith and administer of gift of healing. And so this gentleman prayed over the phone and within days, the numbers of my dad started increasing started becoming better. His body became healthier and the doctors were just amazed. They're like, we've never seen somebody rally this fast from that cl close point of death. And so they were really amazed. They wouldn't call it a miracle, but all of us who are praying faithful people knew that God had worked a miracle, a miracle of healing. And then there was another time where God was telling me to raise my expectations. Um, really, when I was on a missions trip and I was asking God, Lord, I want to see some things. I want to see a club foot healed. That's what I asked him. I'm like, God, I want to see that. I was on a missions trip in Central, Central America, 
And so I was praying for that and I was looking for it. And right next to me, a ministry, a couple was ministering to a mother and a young boy. And the boy, about four or five years old, he had a club foot. And they were praying in faith through the gift of healing. And the, the club foot straightened. And the boy started running around on the front of the church. And the mother just started weeping because she had never seen her son run like that. It was amazing testimony of God's love and God's power as he worked through a gift of healing to transform a boy's life, but also the mother. And they loved God and they were so appreciative of these things. So this is just a really a thumbnail skip, sketch of the gift of healing. It's still supposed to be active through the Holy Spirit in all of our fellowships, all of our congregations, from a small group up to the full um, church gathering together. The Holy Spirit is desiring to be active in our midst partially through the gift of healing. So I encourage you and I give you permission from Scripture to pursue this gift. As Paul said, pursue all spiritual gifts. So God bless you as you pursue the gift of healing and um, stir up all the gifts in your community and in yourself. In Jesus' name, bless you.